Man, it feels good to be back. Let's get it. What is up, Turtle Squad? It's your boy, Eric. We are back with another video. Welcome back to Black Turtle Garage. So we are here in the new and improved man cave. Um, if you didn't know, uh, I actually just recently moved earlier this year in about August. We're now in December. Uh, almost to the new year. So we are here um, and we're back. Black Turtle Garage, official Black Turtle. The videos are back. Um, slowly but surely, we're gonna go ahead and uh, start rolling out content. I've got some builds on the way and that's what we're gonna be talking about today. 2020 was kind of a rough year. Um, so we're gonna be talking about that and we're gonna go ahead and update everybody here and give you guys a glimpse into what's to come in 2021. So let's go ahead and get into it. All right, so build wise. It's been kind of a crazy year. Uh, financially, you know, we're not really spending a lot of money on our RCs because we're not really going out. We're not really breaking things. Uh, so builds are gonna be pretty, pretty basic. Um, just, we're gonna be continuing on some builds. Um, I'm gonna be showcasing builds that I did complete during uh, the lockdown and we're gonna go ahead and just kind of roll through it. Uh, I have a couple builds that you guys can see here. Um, I'm actually gonna do a video on my full RC collection um, as far as what rigs are basically here on our shelf. I am also gonna be doing a studio tour. I know people have asked for that um, to kind of show you guys the new man cave. So as you guys can tell, it's something that's completely different. It's a, obviously it's a new house. Um, so it's a room dedicated specifically to YouTube, to RC uh, and to my hobby. So a little bit of gaming in here, but nothing crazy yet. Uh, but that is to come on the official Black Turtle uh, series. Uh, probably a day in the life videos will be making a comeback soon. Those might take a while because it, you know, there isn't really much to do during lockdown. So we're, if we can try and sneak in a, a day in the life here and there, then we'll go ahead and do that. But don't expect any of the crazy videos we did before, um, you know, with unboxings and things like that, just because of social distancing and kind of the things that we've been trying to do. So uh, let's go ahead and get into this video. Let's talk about builds in early 2021. So let's go ahead. And... So. First up on our docket, let me go ahead and zoom this out. What the heck? Boom. So first up, we've got our no prep car. So no prep over the last year. Since the original prep video that I did, gosh, three years ago now, um, the original NorCal no prep race, uh, no prep has blown up, especially during quarantine because you don't need a lot of space to do this. You need 132 feet, which could be done outside in your driveway or not your driveway, outside uh, on your street. You can do it in a parking lot. Uh, and these cars are relatively cheap to build. Um, they have been, they've gone up in price a little bit since then. Um, since the last video, we've had an actual RTR release, which is what is here in front of us, sort of. So what I have here is a, a team associated DB10 converted to a DR10, which is the, no, everybody should know by now what that is. Uh, but this was my list car and it's kind of, you know, Throughout time, I just I, I need something that's a little bit more my speed. So while this is a card that was very fast, was very competitive, um, it just it wasn't what I was looking for in this car. Um, I thought that coming back from a carbon fiber chassis was, you know, going to be beneficial for my game. But I just decided that this car needed to be a class of its own, and in the time that since our last video, there has been the development of a 13.5 class, uh, which is a more scale class, which uh, my wife, my lovely wife, actually purchased a Proline Barracuda body. Uh, thank you to Proline for making amazing bodies. Um, I do have some parts from McAllister Racing coming for this car. Um, Lit LED will also have their hands on this car as well, so they'll be making me nice and bright. So we will be making this our scale car. Uh, Exclusive RC will also have some parts in here. Um, as far as power plant goes, as always, you guys know, Reefs 422 running the, the steering, and I'll probably be throwing in a Reedy system in there uh, for my 13.5 motor, probably a 510R ESC. So as those parts start rolling in, I'll do install videos and I'll keep you guys updated. Uh, as far as paint goes, I won't be showcasing the, the paint scheme until a later video, until everything's all done. So if you see any more videos of this car, will probably be with the body off, no bodies on. Um, I do, 
want to make a shout out to, I, I, and this is this is kind of the weird thing. So I was down at OCRC one day meeting with uh, the owner of one of the companies that has sponsored me in the last year, which is Sticky Kicks RC, which you guys know I love Sticky Kicks. They're amazing sauce. They're uh, cleaning products. It's 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 pretty much all I run. Um, so I was down there meeting with them, and I came across these turnbuckles, and they're sold at OCRC. I didn't realize they were like 40 bucks, but they're really nicely anodized. Um, if you guys have been to OCRC and know what I'm talking about, know, cause they, they had a whole display of their turnbuckles. If you guys know what the company's called, put it down below because I need to find some more of these for my next build. They just make it pop. They add that little bit of oomph to it. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, outfit the next car that we're gonna be talking about with those as well. Um, but that's pretty much it. Uh, the, as far as this build goes, there isn't really anything special done to it. I'm running Proline Reactions as far as the tires, uh, Pomona wheels in the back. The front are 2.2 bead locks to add a little bit of weight to keep the nose down. I don't know if that's going to stay for the 13.5 car because we don't have that much power. Uh, you know, we won't be running a wheelie bar, so I don't know if that's really going to be necessary. So we're going to see if that gets swapped out. Um, I am running a Team Associated B5. Uh, sway bar not the one that comes in a kit um to my knowledge the guy at the store was like this is like the last one in the country i don't know if that's true or not but i bought this a while back so we'll see um but everything else is pretty much stock uh i am running proline power stroke shocks on it just because it's a 13.5 class it's not going to be uh the added weight from the proline so it's not going to be that big of a factor um so you know i i like the nice smooth uh shock that ProLine make. So that's what we're going to be running front and back. Um, that's pretty much it for this build. I think we can kind of move on to the next one. Again, guys, if you guys have any questions, please feel free. Follow me down below on my Instagram, Black Turtle Garage. I've tried to be more active on it here after Christmas um, and just trying to get everything just back up and running. So follow me on Instagram, follow me on Facebook at Black Turtle Garage. Um, and we'll be talking a little bit more about that in the future. So let's go ahead and get to the next car. All right. So the next car that I want to talk about is actually a build that I've been talking about for years. And when I say years, I'm talking about maybe three or four years now. So this uh, was a collaboration with a good uh, RC buddy of mine that I've met throughout the years, um, West Made Builds. You guys have seen, uh, I'm sure you guys have heard of him, um, but he is a basically from scratch styrene bodybuilder. And this man builds cars that are just ridiculous. He can fabricate, he makes uh, molds to vacuum form styrene, which is a form that I haven't really seen used a lot. Um, and he's kind of the main person that I know. Um, so we contacted him a couple years back and said, hey man, I think I want to build a cab over. I wouldn't want to build by anybody else. Is that something you can do? Um, so we talked about it. We talked about price and I said, okay, Let's see what we can do. Um, he said that's a build that he'd been wanting to do for himself. And you guys uh, should definitely take a look. I'm going to go ahead and link that one down below um, if I could find it. I think it's on the Scale Builders Forum. It was actually just recently uh, showcased on RC Car Action Magazine. So uh, it's his COE Rat Rod. Um, it's a uh, 110 scale version of a full-size car. Um, I'm The name of the actual, it's from a, a car show. I'm not really sure what the show is, but um, it's a it's a pretty much a, a to the T scale replica of that car. Um, but with that being said, you know, I said, I, I need this body. I need you to make this for me. <sighs> what can we do? And he said, well, there's two ways you can get it. You can either get it yourself, uh, completed, ready to paint, um, all assembled, or we can make you a kit which basically means he would vacuum form all the parts. It'd be my job to glue them together. It'd be my job to do all the body work. It'd be my job to do all the sanding, all the painting, um, which painting would be included in the other one as well, or would be something I need to do with the other one as well. Um, but I opted for that because I'd never built a hand uh, scratch built body before. Like that's not something that I've ever done that I would ever think of even trying because of my lack of skill in that area. But that gave me the opportunity to kind of get a little bit into that part of the hobby. And it's something that has been extremely difficult uh, because, and I don't even want to say extremely difficult. It's been difficult for me because it's, I'm, I'm having to learn how to glue these bodies together, which you can't just go and use Elmer's glue. You can't just use super glue. You got to use adhesive uh, that's, you know, 
specifically made for this. Um, I've never done body, body work on RC bodies like this. I've done it on full size cars, but obviously it doesn't scale down the same. Uh, it's a little bit harder to work with smaller areas. So it's been definitely a real challenge to build this body. Um, but let's talk about the chassis first. Actually, no, let's show you guys the body. So the body that we've got is our Ford inspired cab over body. Um, I have to still cut out the back window and the side windows. Um, and I left those on while I'm doing the body work just to add a little bit of rigidity to it. I don't want to be sanding and accidentally break off of a thinner piece. Um, once this is ready for paint, uh, like final paint, I'll go ahead and go in with the tool, cut that out, try to clean it up as best as I can, shoot it with some primer and either send it out to paint or go for it myself. The only reason that I would want to send it out to paint is because as you guys have probably seen, uh, ASD crawlers, uh, longtime friend, Paul Pachok does some amazing paint work. If you guys have seen Oscar from ASD crawlers forerunner build, uh, it, the paint is just immaculate. And that would be the only reason that I would want to send it out just to get something painted by him. Um, otherwise I'd probably tackle the paint. Um, We'll see. The last paint job that I did on a hard body came out okay. Um, I, I've learned some tricks since then, and I'm hoping that I can probably bring it to uh, to this body and make this body look really nice. But we'll see how that works out. It also depends on what paint scheme I'm going with. If I'm going with a single stage color, um, I'll probably do it myself. But if I want something a little bit more intricate, Paul's probably going to be my guy. But let's talk about this chassis. And if you guys remember, I think it was last Christmas. I don't know if I actually did a video on this car, um, but I did end up picking up a Tamiya Grand Hauler. Um, and the reason that I went with the Grand Hauler over like the King Hauler, which I actually have one of those here, um, is the length of the chassis as well as the strength of the chassis. And that I did not mean for that to rhyme at all, I, I promise. But as I was looking at, at these, Right, look at the length of this body or this chassis. It's extremely long. It is something that just kind of piqued my interest. And I was inspired by a drift build that I had seen years back. Um, you know, a buddy of mine, Jamie Moreland, he's a, I call him a mad scientist, but he's the guy that kind of helps with my tuning and drift and drag car, you know, when COVID's not happening. Um, but he, put me on to a build called the Baller Hauler. And what this was, was somebody took a pretty much a box truck, turned into a flatbed and uses that to drive around his uh, his drift car around, you know, around, around the country, because I'm pretty sure he's competitive all around. Um, the guy's based out of Sacramento. And that inspired me to kind of create something for my on-road cars. Um, so this is going to be my version of a Baller Hauler. Um, I call it my Baller Hauler just kind of just for the name, but I'll probably end up naming it something else. Uh, but let me see if I can kind of test fit this body on here. So you guys can see um, the plan is to build a flatbed for the back uh, that cars can drive onto. And this will more than likely be just for my uh, on-road cars, but possibly my crawlers as well. So who knows? Uh, we might be able to figure that out. Um, I'm not really sure on the style of bed. I might be doing some polls on Instagram for you guys to help me choose uh, the style of the bed. Um, I've learned a lot since then, a lot in the, the designing aspect of RC and trying to kind of be a little bit more uh, prepared, I guess would be the word. So I'm going to be posting some things up like that throughout the year. Um, I don't know when this build will be going. This is something that I've kind of prioritized as far as the body work. But as far as the cage work, there's a lot of uh, 3D printing, a lot of metal fabrication that's going to have to be done. Some of it, which is out of my scope. So I'll either be learning how to do it with you guys, or I'll be sending it out to somebody to do and trying to document that as much as possible. So that really depends on how things go and my ability at the time. So that's that's the baller hauler. As far as electronics go, it's pretty basic. Uh, Hobby Wing 1080 ESC. It's running the stock motor in it right now. I think I'm going to go ahead and get something that's a little bit lower turn. I'm not really sure what the turn of it is right now. I want to say it's somewhere in like the, oh man, like 35, 55 range. I think I'm going to bring it down to like an 80, 80 turn, something like that, just to get a little bit more realistic speed. Um, it has a, I think it's only got the single 
uh, the, the transmission locked out into a single gear. Uh, so it doesn't run the three speed like the Tamiya Grand Hauler has just because I don't think that I would need that for this, but we'll see. I might end up uh, putting a reef servo in there uh, to be able to use the, the three gears accordingly. So we'll see. So we are running a 422 HD as well in this one because it is turning is not going to be something that we need a ton of strength for. Um, and the 422 HD from Reefs RC is a servo that's affordable, has more than enough power. Um, if you're not going to be bashing in anything like that, it's going to be more than enough for what we need. Um, if anything, we do have other options from Reefs that we can do if we need a little bit more turning uh, power when it is carrying a load. But most of the rigs that are going to be on here are no more than five pounds. So we should be good. Um, yeah, that, that's pretty much it for, for this build. Um, I do have a couple more that uh, you know we're gonna be doing in 2021, uh, but those are gonna be kind of released as we go. These two are the ones that I'm working on currently and will probably be done in January and February uh, as we go along. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you guys uh, are excited as I am, as excited as I am for Black Turtle Garage to be back on the air, back on YouTube, uh, back recording. Th this, is, this is my escape. This is where I feel at home. This is where, you know, I, I appreciate every subscriber that subscribed over the last year without me even posting. Honestly, that's something that I am completely baffled at and I'm, I'm happy that you guys are here. Um, so like I said, thank you guys for coming back. Thank you guys for being patient. We're back better, stronger than ever. Uh, so welcome, welcome back to Black Turtle Garage. Um, make sure you guys like, share, and subscribe as always. Check out the links down below uh, if you want to kind of get into some more information on these builds. If you guys want to follow me, follow me on Instagram. Also, make sure that you guys check out, uh, we have started an RC podcast. Some of you might not know, some of you might. Uh, so look out for the RC Hangout on Sundays on Facebook and YouTube starting in the new year. Uh, but we'll be there uh, live and in charge, uh, bringing you guys a new podcast every week. So I think that's, I think that's it for this.